Hello viewers, I am Prof. P. K. Kathal from Department of Applied Geology, Dr. Hari Singh Gaur University, Sagar, India. I am going to deliver a series of lectures on Applied Micropaleontology. The topic of my today's lecture is Applications of Microfossils, a general account. The content includes Microfossils, what they are, why study microfossils, what are their applications that can be broadly divided into higher resolution biostratigraphy, use in petroleum exploration, and study of paleo environment of deposition of sediments. What are microfossils? Once living protists, plants, and animals of less than 4 mm size or pieces of larger organisms like Odontoglyphus, that is a conodont, or sponges, bryogens, etc., whose study requires use of a microscope. Invertebrate paleontology is a study of fossils of invertebrate animals preserved in rocks or sediments by natural agencies. When we say invertebrate animals, we mean all those animals which do not have vertebral column, like protozoa, porifera. Platyhelimenthes, Mollusca, Bryozoa, Echinodermata, Brachiopoda, etc. Micropaleontology is, in fact, a technique based division of invertebrate paleontology employing spatial methods of sampling, separation, study, and illustration. In the two pictures, the left hand side, I am showing you a scanning electron microscope with the help of which we can achieve magnification up to 10 lakh times and microfossils can be observed. The, there are two images shown on the uh, right side of the uh, SEM and uh, in the other picture uh, we can use digital microscope to view microfossils and the image is uh, uh, maybe obtained on a computer monitor. So this way we can say that the study of micropaleontology requires a very skilled handling right from sampling, separation, study, illustration, etc. Why study microfossils? In fact, one or the other group occurs near, in nearly all the Phenerozoic rocks in abundance. So there is no dearth of fossils. We can go for precise dating. We can also study salinity and depth of water in which the sediments were deposited. It can enhance economic viability of any oil or coal exploration project by pointing target sectors. So we can save time and money in search of oil and coal. Study of paleo environment through paleogeography, paleoclimate and paleoecology, which is gaining a lot of importance. Study of nature of bioevolution can also be attempted with the help of microfossils. Microfossils may be broadly divided into two groups on the basis of nature of wall. One is called mineral walled microfossil, other is called organic walled microfossil or palinomorph. Mineral walled microfossils include foraminifera, which is the largest and most important group, ostracoda, calcareous nanoplanktons, diatom, radiolaria, conodonta, while organic walled microfossils include dinoflagellate cyst, pollen, and spore. Here I am showing you the important groups, their composition and applications in a broad way. And this group is of mineral wall microfossils. The first and foremost is calcareous and agglutinated group of foraminifera, which are useful in high resolution biostratigraphy. Their planktonic species are used in global biostratigraphy and its correlation. Mosulanids, which are larger foraminifera, they are used in biogeneration of upper carboniferous to Permian rocks. They are also good markers in Cretaceous to recent times. We can also work out paleo temperature on the basis of uh, oxygen isotopes along with the surface and water bottom conditions. Uh, in oil exploration, foraminifera are very useful. Calcareous species generally show normal temperature, intermediate depth, low latitudes, and agglutinated species show cold deep waters and high latitudes. Another group of calcareous nature is nanoplanktons, 
which are used in high resolution biosphere AFE of particularly Cenozoic rocks. Surface water te paleo temperature and paleoecology can be worked out. Paleo temperature studies can be done for surface waters. Chemistry of surface column and bottom waters can be studied. Miocene water masses shift glacial interglacial during Pleistocene period can be studied and they are also helpful in the study of rate of sedimentation. The siliceous radiolaria, they are useful in biostratigraphy of Mesozoic in higher latitudes. Also in deep sea sediment study as they do not show any effect of dissolution which otherwise calcareous forms show in great depths. So they are very useful for deep water sediments and they also uh, correlate well with the magnetic reversals of particularly last 3 million years. So their utility go hand in hand with magnetostratigraphy. Another group of siliceous wall is diatom, which is used in biogeneration of Cretaceous and tertiary rocks, particularly warm and both uh, warm and cool water, and also in paleoecology of Pliocene, Pleistocene rocks and paleo temperature on the basis of season isotopes. We can study lake development history that is called paleo paleolimnology, effect of acidity in climate and anthropogenic anthropogenic effects may also be studied. The another uh, part of the same uh, mineral world microfossil include phosphatic conodonta which are parts of extinct animal. They are used in the zonation of marine or division rocks but also sometimes uh, um, Permian and uh, Triassic rocks also and they are of a special utility for studying sea floor spreading. Change in their color, laminar color, shows influence of temperature and duration of burial that is helpful in oil exploration. And they can also help in calculating the astronomical days in geological time uh, and they also the chances of formation of oil in nearby areas. Titanocalcareous group is uh, Ostrocoda. They are particularly helpful in study of paleosalinity or shift in shore lines. So in overlap and offlap or transgression and regression deposits along the coast can be studied using Ostrocoda. Their varied morphology is useful for dating, biostratigraphy and paleo environment. They are useful in oil exploration in a special way that we need not to identify uh, their species particularly if we are interested to know the rate of sedimentation, degree of pyritization or reducing environment and deformation for compaction of rock. These parameters, they do not require any identification of Astrogoda, but they are very useful in oil exploration. The uh, other group is uh, organic world microfossil. One is dinoflagellate cyst. Their paleoecology and paleo environment is um, very important for studies. They show distance to shoreline, means the, the deposition of rock and the distance from the coast. Uh, they are markers of, of um, freshwater and deltaic rocks and correlation of continental and near shore in Devonian or younger deposits can be easily uh, made. Another group, organic mold microfossil is of pollen and spore, which are released in abundance and they are used in biogeneration of marine Mesozoic, Cenozoic rocks. They also show direction of transport near and offshore areas, particularly in quaternary stratigraphy, probable climate control, correlation and interpretation of marine strata. Microfossils have a lot of utility in biostratigraphy and high resolution biostratigraphy. Biostratigraphy know, we know is a characterization and correlation of biogeons. So they are useful in this um, particular aspect. High resolution biostatography is in fact fine time slicing of geological sequences that has been revealed in the deep sea drilling project or ocean drilling program data which has helped us in reconstruction of paleo environment of deposition of sediments with other aspects of paleo oceanography. Utility in biostratigraphy and high resolution biostratigraphy can be appreciated in this diagram, which has three columns. The first column is showing the three uh, litho zones, 
uh, and uh, and stratigraphy is called as lithostratigraphy but we find that in the middle column uh, when we use fossils of larger animals we find that the same zones which are three in number may be further divided into six zone and uh, that is uh, that is helpful in a study of uh, stratigraphy and we can correlate these zones on the basis of uh, fossils but if we use micro fossils i mean to say foraminifera ostopoda calcareous nanoplankton and others we find that the biozones can be further divided and we may call them as micro biozones so here we find that the in lithostratigraphy we could make only three zones but in biostratigraphy of, on this on the basis of larger fossil we could make six zones but when we use micro fossil we are able to make nine zones it is simply an illustration of how a high resolution biostratigraphy may be achieved using micro fossils this in this particular uh, figure um, i have uh, shown you an imaginary sequence which allow us which allows us to go for you, you go for uh, applying various criteria of a stratigraphic correlation lithostratigraphy magnetostratigraphy seismostratigraphy biostratigraphy high resolution biostratigraphy and chronostratigraphy the first column is showing us three lithozones arenaceous middle is calcareous and upper one is argillaceous if, if we apply magnetostratigraphy and make uh, magneto zones on the basis of normal and reverse polarity we find that there are seven zones so it is um, a better uh, resolution in stratigraphy the similarly we find that seismostratigraphy here in this particular case is going hand in hand with magnetostratigraphy and there are seven seismo zones but when we use biostratigraphy we, on the basis of larger fossils of fishes corals ammonites amelibanks um uh, and other organisms we find that we are able to make uh, 11 zones and if we go for micro fossils foraminifera ostopoda uh, calcareous nanoplankton or any other we find that the uh, 11 bio zones have been further divided and the total number of bio zones here is 16 so this is how the high resolution again can be understood and if we go for dating we find that it becomes uh, highly scientific to apply this um, particular data for um, stratigraphic classification as well as correlation and uh, we find that high resolution biostratigraphy goes hand in hand with chronostratigraphy by help of radioactive dating uh, we can also study uh, paleo environment of deposition of sediments by use of microfossils. We, that includes the construction of environment and micro environment through time, study of paleo oceanography, study of paleoclimatology using radioisotope data to study spatial and temporal variations and monitoring trends in physical, chemical, and biological aspects of ecosystem that are relevant to plate tectonics. Microfossils are very useful in oil exploration and abundance and presence of one or the other group help formulation of numerous biozones and correlation of biozones in some surface samples or borehole samples or borehole logs help us in oil exploration. They are also useful in evolution of life. The long phyletic chains that are stages of evolution make them ideal subjects for studies on evolution of the group and the overall life. Environmental monitoring is a very burning issue nowadays. If we need to, uh, if we require to keep our environment pollution free, may it be a freshwater environment or coastal environment, the organisms, microorganisms, the shelled microorganisms, they are very helpful in the study of environment and maintaining the aquatic environments clean. Uh, they are also been they have also been found useful in forensic investigation.